Welcome to NFL Hits on Believe's Podcasting Network. JT with former great corner Ellis Hobbs joins us, one of the great return men to play in his era during his time with New England and Philly. Ellis, great to talk to you. Thanks for doing this. JT, good being here with you as well, man. Let's jump in. I want to start off with your opinion on what you think is going to happen with Aaron Rodgers because Jordan Love came in for some mop-up duty, looked pretty good. Aaron Rodgers had to leave the game, and he says he wants to play again. He's got the biggest contract per season on an annual salary, but you think he's going to stay with Green Bay at the end of the season and be a part of another rebuild or tweak, or do you think he'll be open for a trade? Um, I, th- I think in general, uh, take – you know, take the individuals out of it. I think it was just a, um, a bad way of managing the marriage. I think if you talk about how uh, both tables uh, came to came to the front, um, they lose, uh, you know, their star receiver. Um, they the, the, So they lose their star receiver. The team drafts uh, a quarterback, obviously for the replacement. Rodgers doesn't take it or doesn't uh, take it the right way or, you know, rightly so feel some kind of way. And they've tried to make this thing work. But the reality is, is that I personally think Rodgers shot himself in the foot by not necessarily handling, not necessarily saying the wrong words, just handling it the wrong way with the team. When he kind of put everybody out there on blast, especially the receivers, which admittedly so they were, you know, making a lot of mistakes in the beginning. But I mean, for the last couple of games, uh, a lot of that has been on Aaron you know, with some miss error throws uh, behind them, mistimed, everything else. And so, you know, the league is all about now. And social media uh, plays a big role into that, um, just the way we live our lives. And so pretty much everybody's trying to swipe left and give him that energy behind him. But I don't think he wants to let it go, of course, because he's a competitor. But I just think it, at this point, it's, it's too damaged to salvage. Yeah, I wondered that because I just wonder if he's going to now start flexing. What happens, in your opinion, if Matt LaFleur and – Brian Goodencoats, the GM, decide, look, we want to, we're out of this. They have to run the table. We're out of this. We want to see Jordan Love play here, maybe to even trade Jordan Love and move on from them and get some value out of this. Do you think Rodgers will sit back, or does Rodgers have the right to be in control of this entire conversation and say, if I could go, I'm playing, I'm the quarterback, he's still got to remain on the bench? Uh, I think he, I think because of his pedigree and his history, um, not necessarily championships. Obviously, he's won one, but it's been quite some time. But just his standard of play substantiates him coming to the table and having a voice. Now, that being said, there are more years behind him than there are in front of him. And so if you're talking about someone who is trying to roll the dice as a team, as a unit, as a franchise, and say, hey, let's put it all out there, similar to like a, a Los Angeles Rams last year, go out and get the best of the talent and put that around him. Yeah, let's do it. But if you're trying to rebuild around Aaron Rodgers, you know, Tom Brady is an amazing, amazing uh, feat. He's a great person, but that's, I feel like that's more of an anomaly that hasn't been, that has yet to been proven as the consistency. And so with Aaron, you just don't know. Time is not on his side. Let's move to Jalen Hurts. The more you watch him and run, it's remarkable. You know, in the era of Michael Vick that you're aware of and great running quarterbacks, what makes him different, Ellis, in regards to standing in the pocket and waiting for receivers? He's got great weapons with A.J. Brown and Smith. they got guys who can get open downfield, and he can extend the pocket and make every throw, and he's so elusive in the running game. Have you seen enough to think that this kid could play – deep into the playoffs without making mistakes and get the team to the Super Bowl? I actually do, man. Um, Not necessarily because of his talent, but because of his poise. Um, The fact that he has such a great stability on mental. And if you watch him, good, bad, or indifferent, the guy never flinches. And he just continually does what he does. And so when you look at the greatest quarterbacks in history, some of the more higher level quarterbacks that go on into the playoffs, those guys are able to stay even kill and just manage the game accordingly. It's not necessarily that they're playing any better than the other team or any quarterback. They just know how to stay at level while those guys are dipping down or X, Y, and Z. And so I would take that back to the course of his history to where think about his maturation from Alabama, where those last two years were pretty volatile, you know, where you have two in there and, you know, how do you handle that as an individual? You see most college kids, they don't bounce back from that. They don't learn from that. And so for him to take a back seat. And we saw a little bit of the flashes going into that SEC championship, and he brought those guys back. And then, of course, full-blown when he went to Oklahoma, and now here we are. I just think he's the evolution of what a traditional quarterback looks like, but then also match that with 
a guy, like you said, who's elusive in the pocket, because how many times have we talked about guys who are amazing with their feet, but they just can't throw the ball. They can, they can maybe throw a screen pass or, you know, an out route quick out or a slant, but they don't know how to dot that ball when, uh, you know, there's two defenders right there. He's starting to get into that conversation of being one of those elite quarterbacks, but evolved in a sense of he's mobile. Now I want to move on. Great segue. You're helping me out here with Tua because I'm looking at, I'm wondering if these guys who don't have enough experience can play their best football in the postseason. And now we're with Tua again, and we're trying to figure out, we've seen enough. He's going into the Niners. I'm going to get to Jimmy Garoppolo after this. I think this is a great game. Miami at the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo in a moment, but Tua, this is arguably his toughest test on the road against a really good defense in San Francisco. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think um, if the stat, if the stat is still correct, the uh, 49ers haven't allowed a second half touchdown, um, you know, yes. for quite, yeah, for quite some time. So this will be a great test for him. And as far as Tua goes individually, what have we always been continually saying about him? What happens when he gets some talent around him? Is he really going to be either shown as a great quarterback that can actually, you know, enhance these guys, or are we going to expose Tua for he's not really who we think he is? Well, he's definitely shown improve. And so going on, uh, going into, you know, the 49ers game, I definitely think, that this will be his greatest test. I also think it's uh it's a good test for uh the Miami head coach. You know, coming back from from that regime, I think he'll have to a prepared and ready because who are we kidding? Regardless if you're on offense, defense, or special teams, you're very aware of your foundation of your background, and so he'll give him the right tools and the right setups that he needs to be successful. But at the end of the day, it's ultimately up to Tua to go out there and manage the game. So let's stay with Jimmy Garoppolo now. With Garoppolo, we've seen him miss one deep ball in a Super Bowl. It was the difference between the game. The Niners did not want him, Ellis. They, they didn't want him at all. They put him on the trade block. No one took him after the injury. And then all of a sudden, they have him there. It's a lot of luck because any team could have traded for Garoppolo. The Niners would have almost taken anything back to get rid of him and go with Trey Lance. Fortunately for John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, they have Garoppolo and he's playing at a very high level. This guy doesn't lose much. And I know you know him well from the New England years. So what have you seen with Jimmy G that either gives you the confidence that he can make big plays throughout an entire postseason run? Or is it still in the back of my mind that he's one interception away in a big postseason game of kind of slowing the Niners down? So I say break that down into three categories, three things, right? And so when you talk about just what you're seeing as an individual, as a player, take Garoppolo out of it, take anybody out of it, regardless of what you think, error throw, miss throw, uh, miss throw here and there, whatever it is, it is a, a feat in itself to take your team to the playoffs and then get you to the big dance, right, to the Super Bowl. And so you never can take that away from him. Obviously, he's capable of at least doing that. Um, the second thing, when you look at what we talked about earlier, the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. I would say this is the 10% chance of the what if. What if we keep him around with the first round draft quarterback? Does he receive that well? And is he able to flourish within it? Well, for what you just said and the storyline behind that, we, ever did, we obviously thought that that wasn't going to happen in the beginning, but look where we are. And so that's the plus side to the debacle of what we see with Aaron Rodgers and, and now the Green Bay Packers. The last thing is, is when you look at just the quarterback position in general, that is a leader position. And no matter what happened in the games that I played with Tom Brady, I always felt as if we had a chance because of who he was and what he's done. And so when you look at Garoppolo, regardless of what you feel about him, it is very evident that whatever the franchise, meaning the organization and the administration felt about him, the team does not feel that way. And so when you talk about the energy that he brings to the, offensive, uh, to the offensive side of the ball and what the energy he brings to the defensive side of the ball, it is very clear that he is the player's champion and that they feel personally that he, ha that he has the best opportunity within himself to put them in a position to be successful. Wrapping it up with Ellis Hobbs, uh, I want to ask you because of your Patriot years, Josh McDaniels now, the team, people were wondering, there was a lot of noise on the outside. I'm in Vegas with the Raiders. And now everything's calmed. Everything's good because everybody understands that he never lost the locker room. The captains were with him. Derek Carr, Max Crosby is having an unbelievable year. And now the Raiders are winning some games explosively behind Josh Jacobs. They got a monster game with the Chargers coming up here, Ellis. And I think it means everything to the Chargers. If the Chargers lose this game, 
And they got eliminated last year in one of the greatest regular season games of all time, that elimination yep. game. <laughs> yep. So they're coming in with a lot of uh, payback on their mind. But the Chargers, everybody's hurt all the time. They have problems. They win games really bizarrely. If the Chargers don't win this game, they almost have to run the table. They'll have six losses here, and they'll be in a little bit of trouble going forward. Tell me what you like about the Raiders and Josh McDaniels now, and if you think the Chargers come into Vegas and win this game. Uh, I've been liking them from the beginning. I think when you talk about uh, overall uh, who they are, they were missing some key pieces, and I think they filled those gaps. You know, you have Devontae Adams, uh, arguably one of the uh, the greatest receivers at his position or, or starting to mature into that, but definitely top top receiver right now in the league. And so if you watch throughout the, the course of the season, the, you know, the connection between uh, the quarterback and Devontae Adams, that hasn't really expired. And I think everybody else is just playing a little bit of catch up. They've been in games and they've had opportunities to go out there and win. I think because of the pedigree of what Josh McDaniels comes from, uh, the process, again, you take that against social media and the culture, we're looking for that immediate impact, right? Versus, okay, he has to rebuild, he has to talk to, he has to develop and just get guys to believe in the actual process. Now, coming from the Patriots, that's a little bit easier to do than that. And I think that's why he's been given some grace outside of these losses. But yeah, you're definitely seeing the momentum go their way. But I've always felt like that team specifically has been one or two plays away because they have a great running back in Jacobs. Um, they have a great defensive line, you know, for what you said, you mentioned in, uh, with Crosby and just overall, just athletes. I think the makeup of the Raiders have always been just great athletes in general. But now you're matching that with the psychological level. And the mentality that comes with playing at that high level of football. And so I think they have a very, very good chance against the Chargers. With the Chargers back against the wall, I think it's going to be a very great game. But if you had to give me one team or the other, I'm taking the Raiders just because of, again, the pedigree and the, and the, and the coaching that I know that's happening in on a day-in and day-out level with situational football. So now you're matching that athletic talent with that Patriot McDaniels, Belichick background of like, okay, when we get into these key moments, what are we doing at those inflection points to be successful? Amazing analysis on that. Excellent. Last one, the Rams. Do you think they should just shut it down? They're not going to the playoffs. Cooper Cup's on IR. They probably don't bring him back. Aaron Donald ha is the greatest defensive player, arguably, of his generation. Stafford's been banged up. They won a Super Bowl. If you were running the team, would you start shutting down players instead of furthering injuries they're not going to come back and make the playoffs and look to next year they're competitive they're the world champs they they're not going to defend their title how would you handle these next couple of games coming up here with guys that have really not that much to play for other than their pride and their paychecks and what they're doing here I think they're in a tough spot how do you see it yeah, those two those two last things you said pride and paycheck I think you know at the end of the day you still have to realize this is your job uh, whether sick whether you're you know hurt not injured. Um, you know, you have to be out there. Maybe that's a little bit of my personal opinion in there uh, being subjective. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at, you know, from team to team, player to player, um, as a coach, I'm putting that onus on the players to say, hey, you're still performing for a job. And so unless I'm having that direct conversation, you know, with um, certain individuals, right, you, you hinted towards some of those great players. Um, I, I just don't know if I would sit on my laurels and be comfortable with just putting out minimum effort or par effort because I may not have a job next year. Um, as far as the organization goes, you know, I'm not going to sit here and play dumb. They're definitely going to be, you know, looking forward to next season. I think because they pushed all their chips in for yeah. last year and got what they wanted, it's like, okay, hey, you know, we're, we're willing to take a step back. And, and, and reprogram this thing we have a great coach obviously we have a good quarterback we may need to get some more surrounding pieces or figure some things out and then some things just mistakenly go wrong or unfortunately go wrong but I think overall this is a great testimony to how difficult it is to try to run the table again you know and do it do it back to back regardless of the talent you have situations have to go in your favor in order to get that and that's something that the Rams haven't seen this year yeah one follow-up do you believe in pushing it all in and then not winning for two or three years, but you got the chip, you got the ring, you got the Lombardi, you did it because now people are saying, wait a second, the Rams don't have much draft picks. They gave up and blew up their whole entire drafts for a couple of years, but they got the ring. Where do you stand on that going forward for other teams? It's a business. At the end of the day, there's bottom lines, there's P&Ls. And so if you're looking at their red, uh, their red to green, you know, the black, 
I'm pretty sure they well, well got over that. And yeah. they're willing to take that hit, you know, and LA being such a huge market, um, you know, for that type of team, you know, I, they can do that. You know, can every team do that? I don't think so. But if you look over the core, uh, core aspect of history, um, how many teams do we talk about just making it versus how many teams do we talk about, you know, winning that one Super Bowl? We talked about the Ravens prior to them winning it against the 49ers, you know, with that great team they had against a great defense they had against the Giants. Right. Um, we still talk about the Cowboys, mm-hmm. you know, granted, they have three, you know, in that dynasty of the 90s. But look how far ago those rings were acquired. I think when you acquire the ring, it is just a coveted space that can never be taken away from you. And so people will hang on that for years to come. And I think what they did and the results that they got is exactly what they wanted. Ellis, last one on a personal note for you. When you lay down at night, put your head on the pillow. If you're dreaming about one moment of your entire career, one moment that keeps coming back to you that you think about and brings you peace and tranquility and happiness, what's that play? Um, Wow, that's a a great question. I think... uh, if I had to look back overall, I was taking a knee uh, against, yeah, I was taking a knee against the Chicago Bears. It was a timeout, and I happened to look into the stands, and I was dog tired because at that time, the Chicago Bears, they just ran nothing but go routes with their receivers, and the quarterback would just throw it up for 50 50 balls. So we knew that going into the game, but I still, nevertheless, I was tired. And I remember looking over to my right and seeing Mr. Kraft in the press box area or in the suites. And he was toasting for whatever reason or doing something, you know, celebratory. And again, this was a timeout period. And so it gave me kind of this moment of like, why is he celebrating when we're doing nothing? And the reality was, is that he's making money regardless. And he, oh. he's, in, he's enjoying his time regardless. And so it really started to get me out of the space of playing for the quote unquote love of the game and starting to handle things like a business. Now, I didn't mature from a businessman to, to at that very moment. But again, that sticks in my mind very well because um, a lot of different perspectives and things came off of this, that one moment to say, hey, you know, this is bigger than what you think it is because the reality for Mr. Kraft is this is just a hobby for him. This is one of his many businesses. He, he said that very, very many times within our, um, within our meetings, uh, quote unquote, you know, out of the 93 countries at the time that he did business it, this was one of his most gratifying businesses. And so to hear those things over and over again, similar to like a Magic Johnson who wanted to be around management with the Lakers and be successful, thus that's a moment that sticks in my head very, very much. That is a very cool and unique answer. I'm happy, happy you shared that with us. Ellis, I really appreciate you joining us on NFL Hits. I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks so much. Yes, indeed.